Hi, third graders. I miss you very much. I hope you had a great long weekend and that you were able to get outside and enjoy some of the nice weather that we had. Um, I want to start doing a read aloud with you all. Um, I always do this one in the springtime. It just matches so well. Um, it is called Wish Tree by Katherine Applegate. Um, I really like some of the illustrations that are in this book. So all the chapters have nice pictures of trees and leaves. Um, one we'll get to probably during this read aloud. Um, like it just goes nicely with what's going on in each chapter. Let me read the back to you as you study the front. My close friend called me Red. And you can too. But for a long time, people in the neighborhood have called me the wish tree. There's a reason for this. And it goes way back to when I wasn't much more than a tiny seed with higher aspirations. People come from all over town to adore me with scraps of paper, tags, bits of fabric, snippets of yarn, and the occasional gym sock. Each offering represents a dream, a desire, a longing. Draped, tossed, tied with a bow, all hopes for something better. So, this is our wonderful character, Red. He is a big red, is it a pine or oak? Oak tree. Um... And he is going to be one of our main characters um, who will do a lot of our talking, which is interesting because in real life, trees don't talk. But throughout this book, it will make you wonder if more plants and flowers and parts of nature actually do have feelings and thoughts, but we just can't hear them. So let's hop into chapter one. <laughs> Here's some other fun characters so we'll get to know. It's Icy Raccoon. So it's for newcomers and for welcomers. Be different to trees. The talking oak to the ancient spoke, but any tree will talk to me. What truths I know, I garden so, but those who want to talk and tell, and those who will not, who will not listeners be, will never hear a syllable from out of lips of any tree. So it started off with a poem. Hmm. I think that's saying that there will be trees that will talk but you will never actually hear them say words. Chapter one. See, I just love all of the cute little trees and leaves on there. It's hard to talk to trees. We're not big on chit chat. That's not to say we can't do amazing things, things you'll probably never do. Cradle downy owlets, Steady, flimsy tree forts, photosynthesis. Anyone know what photosynthesis is? It's, it's the process that trees use to grow where they need light and water and soil, and it helps them grow and, um, yeah. But people, but talk to people? Not so much. And just try to get a, a tree to tell a good joke. Trees do talk to some folks. The ones we know, we can trust. We talk to daredevil squirrels. We talk to hardworking worms. We talk to flashy butterflies and bashful moths. Birds, they're delightful. Frogs, grumpy but good-hearted. Snakes, terrible gossips. That means they like to talk about people. Trees, Never met a tree I didn't like. Okay, well, there's that sycamore down at the corner. Yakety, yakety, yak that one. 
So, do we ever talk to people? Actually talk? Like most people of people skills? Good question. Trees have a rather complicated relationship with people after all. One minute you're hugging us, the next minute you're turning us into tables or tongue depressors. Perhaps you're wondering why the fact that trees talk wasn't covered in science class during those Mother Nature is Our Friend lessons. Don't blame your teachers. They probably don't know that trees can talk. Most people don't. Nonetheless, if you find yourself standing near a particularly friendly looking tree on a particularly lucky feeling day, it can't hurt to listen up. Trees can't tell jokes, but we can certainly tell stories and if all you hear is the whisper of leaves, don't worry. Most trees are introverts at heart. An introvert is someone who kind of likes to stay inside. Maybe someone who doesn't prefer to go out and hang out with people they'd rather stay in and watch movies or read books or kind of keep to themselves. Okay. See in the chapter. Chapter 2. Name's Red, by the way. Maybe we've met. Oak tree near the elementary school. Big, but not too big. Sweet shade in the summer, fine color in the fall. I am proud to say that I'm a northern red oak, also known as Curious Rubia. Red oaks are one of the most common trees in the North America. In my neighborhood alone, Hundreds upon hundreds of us are weaving our roots into the soil like knitters on a mission. Ooh, that totally made like a mental movie for me. Like you picture how they knit, you know, blankets and hats and all of that so you can see the yarn all over and their roots are doing that into the ground. I like that. I have rigid reddish gray bark, leathery leaves with pointed lobes, stubborn, searching roots, and, if I do say so myself, the best fall color on the street. Red doesn't begin to do me justice. Come October, I look like I'm ablaze. It's a miracle the fire department doesn't try it to hose me down every autumn. You might be surprised to learn that all red oaks are named red. Likewise, all sugar maples are called sugar, all junipers are called juniper, and all boojum trees are called boojum. That's just how it is in the tree world. We don't need names to tell one another apart. Imagine a classroom where every child is named Melvin. Imagine the poor teacher trying to take attendance each morning. It's a good thing trees don't go to school. Of course, there are expect, expect, exceptions to the name rule. Somewhere in Los Angeles, there's a palm tree who insists on being called karma, but you know how Californians can be. Ah, yeah, we'll do chapter three too. We're just getting to know Red, so let's get a little bit further in our story. My friends call me Red, and you can too. But for a long time, people in the neighborhood have called me the Wish Tree. There's a reason for this, and it goes back to when I wasn't more than a tiny seed with higher aspirations. Long story. Every year, on the first day of May... People from all over town, people come, yes, people come from all over town to adorn me with scraps of paper, tags, bits of fabric, snippets of yarn, and the occasional gym sack. Each offering represents a dream, a desire, a longing. Whether draped, tied, or or, toss, or tossed or tied with a bow, they are all hopes for something better. 
Wish trees have a long and honorable history going back centuries. There are many in Ireland where they are usually hawthorns or the occasional ash tree, but you can find wish trees all over the world. For the most part, people are kind when they visit me. They seem to understand that a tight knot might keep me from growing the way I need to grow. They are gentle with my new leaves, careful with my exposed roots. After people write their hope on a rag or a piece of paper, they tie it onto one of my branches. Usually, they whisper the wish aloud. It's traditional to wish on the 1st of May, but people stop by throughout the year. So here is red when they come on the 1st of May to tie all of their wishes to these root, or roots or bark or branches, trunk. My, oh my, the things I have heard. I wonder what we would all wish if we were together right now. I wish for a flying skateboard. I wish for a world without war. I wish for a week without clouds. I wish for the world's biggest candy bar. I wish for an A on my geography test. I wish Mrs. Generoni weren't so grumpy in the morning. I wish my gerbil could talk. I wish my dad could get better. I wish I weren't hungry sometimes. I wish I weren't so lonely. I wish I knew what to wish for. So many wishes, grand and goofy, selfish and sweet. It's an honor, all the hopes bestowed upon my tired old limbs. Although by the end of May Day, which is what they call May 1st is May Day, I look like someone dumped a huge basket of trash on top of me. All right, we will do chapter four another day. Hope you've enjoyed getting to know Red, the oak tree, and we will find out what adventure he is off to together. Have a great one. Bye, third grade.